Life is a fascinating experience. For all of us, we go through things that shape our hearts and direct us towards particular things. And I'm so thankful today to be able to share with you from God's Word. And I was thinking today as I was processing the beginning of a brand new series, because I want to look at the book of Acts and the heart of our story, because we, as a church family, uh, are beginning a, a journey into the 10th year of ministry in this location. And I thought it would be good to reflect back on the very beginning of how our church started, as well as what our church lives for and what moves us in a direction to accomplish its purpose, but also individually, how we have a particular purpose that is directly linked to accomplishing what God intends in each one of our hearts and lives. And so I'm excited today to be able to share with you because if you'll think about it for a second, all of us have a story. We have something to tell. Uh, we have an opportunity to share. We have a, a blessing uh, to extend. All of that is connected to the fact that God linked us into what Jesus died for because Jesus died for the church. And there's a lot of talk in the recent days about uh, the church not being significant uh, in light of all the things that are transpiring. And the truth of the matter is the church has, is more significant than ever before. I mean, think about it for a moment. Uh, the church is what loves you and cares about you. Uh, the church is what Jesus died for, but also what Jesus lived for on earth. It's why you see him telling them to wait for the wonder that's about to occur. Can you fathom for a moment? Just take a moment. We're in the first book, or first chapter of the book of Acts, and, and take a moment and just kind of realize something, that this is a moment destined for those who are following Jesus to reshape the course of their story. You see, if Peter's story ended with his denial, if Peter's story ended just with him going back fishing, if Peter's story ended without a realization that there was something that God had in store for him, then the story would be incomplete. The story would miss its mark because it would only be half of the story. And listen carefully, Jesus, he's our story. He's the beginning of our story. He's the, in the middle of it and he's the end. He's the one who writes it. And for our, our church, we call ourselves One Heart Church, based out of Acts chapter four, when they became one heart and one soul. We understand something, that we have a very clear responsibility for God to be able to live out what it is that he has for us. That's why we record this message in advance, so that you'd be watching this and you'd be challenged and motivated to think about your story, to think about what it is that God has in store for you, and to surrender your heart to his purpose. You see, it's not an option point to be directly linked to the church. It's a necessity. It's a necessity that we all have, and it's interesting because many of you are watching this, you'll realize that you are linked to one heart. Perhaps some of you by your relationship to me, uh, some of you by your relationship to others, but you understand something very clearly. That One Heart Church lives to accomplish the gospel. We live to be authentic followers of Jesus. We live to impact our world. And that's what makes today an exciting and fascinating time for all of us. And it, it, it thrills me as I record this message to have the privilege and honor of being able to share the unsearchable riches of Christ with you. And my prayer is that God will bless you uh, and enable you to, to relate to this in a, a unique and powerful way. So what you discover is that at the very beginning of the book of Acts, the, uh, Jesus ascends, and out of that, uh, he tells him to wait. And today's message is entitled, Waiting for Wonder. Waiting for those moments that money can't buy, people can't manipulate, and opening up our hearts and lives to experiencing something that's really profound and powerful. So today, as you think about that, I want to ask you, the disciples and all those who are following Jesus were told to wait. So here's the question I have for you. What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for him to speak to your heart in a particular way, as we learned about prayer in the last four weeks? Are you waiting for him to grab hold of your life and guide you towards something that is more profound than you've ever experienced before? Could it be that God is speaking to your heart to think through your story and make sure your story aligns with the wonder of Jesus? You see, it's in the wonder of the Lord Jesus that we find the majesty of life. We find what it is God has for each one of us, and it is profound and powerful. So today, as we launch this study, we're going to be looking at this for, through, through, the, through the fall, and uh, school has resumed, and life is back in gear, and I think it's an important time for us to launch into this new series, because I think it will help you. And, and what I'd like to show you throughout this series is, is the church moves forward by four very distinctive and powerful things. First of all, 
the church moves forward when it has a vision, a vision to accomplish something, a vision to, to do something amazing for God. Secondly, it moves forward when there's an equipping model where people can learn how to be more effective and learn how to experience God's intent. A third area is we get to experience the power of God at work in our lives because we get to see amazing things happen through the church. And finally, the key, another key area that we're going to look at, you're going to see these interlaced throughout all the messages that we look at uh, in this entire study. Uh, that finally, we look at what happens when we're motivated. What kind of motivation do we have? So think about it just for a second. He gives you a vision. Out of that vision, he equips you to accomplish something. Out of that equipping, he gives you the opportunity to be able to experience his power at work in your life. And it motivates you to do what only you can do through Christ. Jesus is the key to everything we're ever going to be, everything we're ever going to accomplish. So let's think about it just for a moment. Because here's a core concept that will be also be interlaced throughout our study. Our love for his church, our love for what it is he has for us, will determine our focus, commitment, and impact. Focus, commitment, and impact. Our love for his church. And, you know, the truth matters. is you can love, love his church in multiple ways. Uh, it is not defined, for example, not defined just by attendance. Because truth is, a lot of people come to church and it may not be that they their hearts are fixed on a doing anything significant or meaningful for kingdom purpose. But it also could be that God has something special in store for those who are willing to link their hearts to the kingdom purpose, link their hearts to what it is God has for them. So in the book of Acts, let's read a few verses and let's kind of set the tone. Because today I want to show you four things that I think will be help you, will be helping for, helpful for all of us as we uh, dive deeply into the book of Acts. So if you're on a reading plan, be sure to add Acts to it. I'm grateful that uh, we have some of our connection classes studying the book of Acts. It's just a great time to see what the church is up to. Look, if you would, at verses 7 and 8 of the book of Acts. He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or epics which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and all Judea and even to the remotest part of the earth. Verse 11. They also said, these are the angels speaking, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you in heaven, will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. Now you realize that, that when you see this, you realize that there, there was something powerful that was about to transpire and that was that they were going to get to watch the ascension, but also be challenged to live out their purpose. They got to see the majestic and beautiful picture of Jesus going back to the Father. But they also got to see the reminder and hear the reminder. Don't just keep gazing up there. Wait for the wonder of what it is only God can do. That's what they were positioned to do. Because they had said, you're going to receive this power. Jesus said it. And it's going to empower you to be so effective you can't imagine. Now think about the Holy Spirit's guidance in all of our lives. How it guides us and motivates us and helps us. There's something beautiful about how God works in each one of our hearts and lives. So today, let's look at this text and let's see if we can not discover. Uh, because what I want to show you is I just want to watch his plan unfold. As we're watching his plan unfold, I think something will become very clear to you. And that is that uh, what you are experiencing is absolutely and directly linked to his purpose for your life personally. And I hope it will speak to you in that very way. First thing you see is it. There's an affirmation of his plan in verses 1 through 3. Look at it with me if you would. The first account I composed, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after he had been, by the Holy Spirit, given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. To these he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. So when you realize that here he is and there's the affirmation of what it is he came to do. And it's interesting because what you discover is that there's something that you and I must grasp as well. And that is we have to come to the place where we understand that we submit to his spirit. We submit to his spirit. And you, and you read here how Jesus obviously connected himself uh, to the spirit and spoke to their hearts and lives so that they would have direction and purpose and guidance. So we submit ourselves to his spirit while at the same time we focus on the kingdom. You'll notice you can't miss this in verse 3 where he says, Speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. 
You see, Jesus didn't come back uh, to the men on the road to Emmaus or to the disciples gathered or to any other place. Jesus didn't show up just to chit-chat and visit about things that were irrelevant. He came to speak about the kingdom of God because he realized that soon he would ascend back uh, into heaven. And so today, as you think about that, what do you talk about? What do you submit to? The truth is, my prayer is that you submit your heart to him and you talk about things that matter because the kingdom of God always matters. He loves you. He's got a plan for your life and he does something for you as a result of you being willing to commit yourself just to wait and experience the wonder that God has for you. Then if you look at verses four and five, the second thing you see is this. He starts, there, there are instructions to follow that are absolutely essential. Look at you at what he said, gather them together. He commanded them, here, here's Jesus talking, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which, he said, you heard of from me. For John baptized with water, but you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. It's interesting because you discover something very essential. The first thing is this, we, our hearts must yield to his command. In other words, he has something he's telling us. We need to follow those commands and follow them very clearly. And it's interesting because he made sure that he contrasted that the commands I'm about to give you are going to link you to the Holy Spirit at work in your heart and life. But he doesn't stop there because he also points out that, there, that our lives are going to be guided by the Spirit. In other words, the Spirit of the Lord is going to tell us, go here. The Spirit of the Lord is going to tell us, accomplish this. The Spirit of the Lord is going to allow us to experience something we never could on our own and calculate on our own terms. You see, today, if you think about that, I mean, imagine for a moment that you're, you're watching this and you're thinking about how important it is that we love his church so that we can have the kind of impact we like to have, we can have the focus we want to have, the kind of commitment. And, you know, the truth of the matter is that I, I've always been blessed and privileged to be involved in lots of different aspects of ministry throughout my lifetime. But I know what my heart rests on. My heart rests on the church. The church that Jesus died for. That's what you and I should do. So, first of all, you have an affirmation of his plan. Secondly, you have the privilege of being able to have very clear, two very clear instructions to follow. The third thing you see is found in verses 6 through 8. And it's there that all of a sudden he begins to give captive, the Bible begins to give captivating reminders of the times in which we live. And we do live in unique times, and we're captivated by what it is that God, God has for us. Look, if you would, verse 6. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or epics, which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest parts of of the earth. Wow. So here's what's interesting. He tells them, guess what? Your life expands in a dramatic fashion. And what you've got to be wise to is understand the times in which you live. You are positioned to accomplish his purpose. You and I in this generation are positioned to do the very same thing. So what does Jesus do? Jesus, he always clarifies. He always clarifies any question that might confuse us because he was making sure they understood something. This is what you need to be focused on. This is what you need to be aware of. This is how you'll be able to do something absolutely profound and powerful. Second thing you see here is Jesus also makes sure that our responsibility centers in our witness. In other words, he wants to make sure in the system, you go into all these remote parts of the earth, you go into these different places, you're going there. Uh, why? Because of the witness of Christ at work in your heart and life. Because of the Spirit of the Lord at work in your heart and life. Today, think about it for a moment. Think about how important it is that you and I come to a place where we acknowledge and are captivated by the things that matter in life, the eternal things that really shape how we see life and shape our hearts. Today, Jesus has something special in store for all of us. This message is not just about us taking in some information. This is about inspiring our hearts to experience what God intends. You see, the truth of the matter is the, the disciples and others could have become victims in the midst of all their loss because Jesus was ascending and leaving. But no, there was vision. There was vision. And today, as you think about that, there's a vision God has for you and me that no one can take away. Final thing to look at, verses 9 through 11. Look if you would, because you'll notice here becomes this, this captive. Uh, Luke captures the experience of them watching him ascend. And by the way, I can assure you that every person that was listening to Jesus was going to stay long enough to see this particular part of the story. And what you discover is how important it is that when we start gazing at the answer, 
that we get motivated to finish what it is he started inside of our hearts. Because he who began this good work in you, he will complete it. Look if you would, verse 9. Notice what it says. And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. They also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. You see, here's what you discover. For all those who were watching this, he had made an indelible impression on their hearts. He had, he had shaped their hearts and thought process in such a way that the idea of him ascending, even though they knew exactly where he was going, and even though the angels declared to them, this is exactly where he'll be, still, the indelible impression that he made changed the world. Those who were part of this helped change the world completely because they took the gospel. They became that witness and took the gospel all over the world. You see today, as you think about that, what kind of impression has he made on you? Is it indelible? It's something you could never forget. My prayer is that's exactly what he's done. Finally, one more thought. And that is when you start looking at how important it is that they were gazing at the answer. What you discover is the angels came to do one thing. To affirm his total plan. Heaven affirms God's plan. In a unique moment for them. In which they had the experience of being able to encounter God at work. Heaven affirmed it. Today, he'll affirm what it is he has in your heart and life. Today, we begin this beautiful opportunity to be able to look at what happens when you wait for the wonder of God at work in your heart and life. Waiting is not easy, but it's always wise. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your amazing word that speaks to our hearts and lives. I pray you bless every person who's watching this. What a joy it is to be able to share your word with those who have a heart for you, who love the church, who help the church move forward. I pray, Lord, you bless each person, everyone watching this, wherever they are in the world. May they feel the love that comes in my heart for them, but also the love that you have for them that far exceeds any love I could ever extend. You are an amazing God who has great plans in store for all of us. Lord, this is an exciting study that I pray will bless the hearts of everyone who's watching. For we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Well, I hope that you will continue to pray for our church. I hope you'll pray, continue to pray that God will allow us to have a, a kingdom impact in a profound way. And as I end this message, I just want to end with this question. Do you love his church? I think you do. I think that's why you're watching this. You love his church. And I hope, pray that you love your pastor as well, that, that uh, these messages have been an encouragement to you and a blessing. The future is so bright. My heart is on fire to accomplish his purpose. I can't wait to see what he has for each one of us. God bless you. Have a great and amazing week. This is going to be a fun time together. See you soon.